Hi, I'm Mitch from Haltech, and welcome to another episode of Haltech Heroes. Today, we're here at Autotech Services in Canberra with Mark Arblaster's 1970 VG Valiant Coupe. So normally on Haltech Heroes, we feature cars that have already finished their builds. But with this car, we're actually going to join the build a little bit earlier on, and we're going to follow the work done to the car over the next few episodes. Commonly known as the Dodge Dart, the VG Valiant is a popular car amongst Australian muscle car builders. This particular car is a bit of a departure from Mark, whose other Valiant is an award-winning show quality car that graced the pages of numerous car magazines. I already going to beautiful Valiant. Show car, big horsepower, but a little bit of a pretty car and I had to be careful working on it. Everything about it was starting to get a little bit high maintenance. I wanted a street car. It had to be grubby looking, it had to be undercover, and it had to be big horsepower. One Sunday morning, I'm having a lazy morning on the internet on Gumtree and I spot a Valiant for sale. As it went, it turned into a bit of a bidding war on this car, but it was just what I wanted. It wasn't pretty, it was straight, it was rust free, it was perfect. Don't let the car's rough interior fool you. That old faded body hides some serious performance gear. The most surprising of which being the engine. In 2010 I went to the United States for Drag Week which was a tremendously exciting event and I saw this stock bottom end evolution over there with these 5.3 LS engines and I thought to myself I want some of this, this is cheap horsepower. Cradled in the engine bay is an iron block 5.3 litre LS motor with stock bottom end. It's running stage two camshaft, set of valve springs and 1650 injectors. Forced induction comes via 80 millimetre Borg Warner turbo. Oh my God, the Mopar haters. You know, these guys, they're just obsessed Mopar or nothing. I've got to admit, I wasn't a believer. But after seeing what those little engines can do, that is absolutely the motor for me. Mark runs a mandrel four inch off the turbo, which then splits mid car with a side pipe, which is covered for street use. The main pipe runs to a single muffler at the diff. When the car is racing, this cap is removed to help move the exhaust gases quicker. The fuel system incorporates a four way pump combo. Four Bosch 044 fuel pumps will be staged sequentially to supply fuel to the engine as the boost in horsepower increases. In the years gone by, I used to race blown injected. A lot of the time we'd blow the engine up if you had your tune up wrong. Today, with the technology available, engine protection and the amount of sensors available to log data, there's no reason for you to blowing engines up through bad tune up. Having owned an EFI car for the last 10 years, I wouldn't think of putting a carburetor on. Yes, there is more work in the setup, but once that is set up, the safeguards that are available in modern EFI Haltech systems, you would be crazy not to run it. Being an LS engine, we've used the Haltech LS terminated engine harness, which comes complete with all the factory engine plugs. The harness also includes a fuse box and a firewall grommet. On the cabin side, the harness ends with the ECU and CAN connectors as well as some unterminated wires for things like the throttle pedal and fuel pumps. The ECU that is going into this car is the Haltech Elite 2500T and that is the ECU that incorporates our torque management. Products we're using to complement the ECU in the car are things like Haltech temperature and pressure sensors, exhaust gas temperature probes and a Haltech wideband. As we are planning to use the Elite's advanced torque management function, we also installed a drive shaft RPM sensor. The Haltech Elite is going to take care of engine protection strategies and a lot of closed loop functionality as well. So things like boost control is going to be closed loop and the ECU is actually going to take care of the flex feeling of the vehicle. So when Mark is done racing his car on his ethanol E85, he can put pump petrol into the car and not have to touch a thing. Our goal today is to start up and fire the engine. But before we even put the key in the ignition, we have to double and triple check everything on the car. We need to inspect the wiring to ensure that there are no short circuits anywhere in the system. 
fuel and oil systems need to be checked and tightened. And finally, because this car has not been started before, we need to make sure it is mechanically ready. By far the most challenging aspect of this build is finding the time to do things to perfection. Even though the car looks rough, the one thing I've learnt from racing is do it right the first time. Don't take any shortcuts. When you want to do things properly, that means investing time, surrounding yourself with the best people and using top quality parts. With all the wiring in place, the engine management system all hooked up and calibrated, and the engine topped up with all the necessary fluids, we are now ready to crank it. The moment of truth. I'm nervous. Make sure you tune in to the next episode where we're going to have the car on the Haltech Dyno to see how much horsepower we can make. I'm Mitch, see you later.